Best friends and experienced cave divers Wang Dao and Wang Yang were diving in Zhuding Cave in Duan Zhang Zhao where they would find themselves faced with an impossible situation. They had just reached a depth of 166 meters or 544 feet and had begun their ascent to the surface. But there was a problem. Wang Dao had only one minute of oxygen left. This is their story. In southern China's tranquil countryside sits Duan. The gorgeous hills and crystal clear rivers offer a sharp contrast to the vibrant megacities that characterize China. The area attracts divers from all over the country with its breathtaking scenery and underwater caves, offering some of the most beautiful formations in the world. The region is home to over 6,200 miles or 10,000 kilometers of underground rivers that carve passageways through the limestone rock. Duan has strong fluctuating seasonal water levels, with variations up to 40 meters or 130 feet between its dry and wet seasons. This of course impacts water flow and visibility but as you can imagine, can create unique and vast cave systems. Some of the deepest known caves in the area exceed 230 meters or 750 feet in depth. Because of the fluctuating water levels, it is best to dive only in certain months, those being April to May or October to November. Access to these caves is challenging to say the least, as most are located in rural mountainous areas with no cellular reception or GPS navigation. Typically, one must rely on guides from the surrounding area to navigate the terrain and to find the hidden entrances. The caves vary in size from small to rather large, featuring stunning stalactites and stalagmites, while deeper passageways have smooth walls carved by water flow from thousands of years ago. Wang Dao and Wang Yang first dived Zhudin in 2010 and were immediately captivated by the cave's beauty. The aquatic plants, unique cave structure, and the cold water that continuously emerges from the ground attracted the duo time and time again. Over the years, they gradually increased their depth. Wang Yang states that the underwater tunnel attracted the men to go deeper and deeper with each dive. On their fifth dive of Juden, they managed to reach 122 meters, or 400 feet. On each dive, they would try to find connecting horizontal passageways that could be explored. In March of 2014, French cave diver Pascal, who at the time held the record for the deepest dive in the world, extended the line in Zhudin to an astounding 160 meters or 520 feet. Once Wang Yong and Wang Dao learned of this, they became extremely motivated to match the feet. The duo would reach out to Pascal and learn everything they could about this deep dive in preparation for their own attempt. Plans were set in motion and the equipment needed was quickly gathered. The duo, along with Zhao Pei, a rescue diver who accompanied the men in case of emergencies, would all arrive at the cave on April 15th. Over the next two days, they practiced their routine, monitored the cave conditions, and prepared over 20 cylinders needed for the dive. By April 18th, the men were ready. After successful completion of their surface equipment tests, the duo entered the water around 2.30 p.m. They planned to follow the one-third rule of diving, which meant that one-third of the gas supply was estimated for the descent, one-third for the return journey, and the last third in case of emergencies. The water temperature was right around 19 degrees Celsius, or 66 degrees Fahrenheit, and the flow, by most standards, would have been considered weak, meaning they would have an easy time navigating the cave. Wang Yang led the way as they descended quickly with no issues. At 75 meters, they switched to the first stage cylinders and kept moving. The cave is structured as an inclined channel, almost like stairs leading deep into the abyss. At 100 meters, the men experienced a low visibility area and had to rely on the guide rope to keep descending. At 120 meters, the visibility improved to about 3 meters. The men greeted each other and gave the OK signal to continue. At 150 meters, they switched to their second set of cylinders and were almost at their goal. Once they reached 164 meters, the men stopped and Wang Dao began arranging arrows on the guide rope. They both felt slightly disoriented due to the depth, but it was not enough to affect their decision making. 
all of their visual checks and indicated that the situation was normal. Their total descent time was 21 minutes. After spending one minute at 164 meters, Wang Yang indicated to start their long ascent that would be filled with many planned decompression stops. But at the 130 meter mark, the guide rope that the men had been following was no longer tied to their previous knot. With their visibility only being two meters, the reality of their situation began to set in. It was hard for both men to not feel the early stages of panic. Wang Yang's heart instantly dropped and he remembered feeling ice cold in his chest. Wang Dao looked at him nervously, but there was no time to think. They both took action and began searching using the terrain around them. And after two minutes, they managed to find the rope as relief washed over them. At this time, Wang Yang realized his second cylinder was out of oxygen, so he transitioned to his main tank and started to ascend. They made their way up to 120 meters when Wang Yang felt a slight tug. Turning around, he saw that Wang Dao was stuck under a protruding rock, pointing his flashlight at his neck, a primary indicator that he was running out of oxygen. Wang Yang was surprised at just how quickly Wang Dao's gas had been consumed, but both divers remained calm as Wang Yong unfolded his long throat and the two of them began breathing symbiotically. Their air pressure at the time was only 130 psi, which Wang Yong estimated would only support two nervous divers at their depth for only three to four minutes. A diver's tank on average can hold up to 3,000 psi, and the general rule of thumb is that if you are below 200, then it is time to surface. Realizing the predicament that they were in, Wang Yang gave the sign to ascend quickly. As they needed to make it to 75 meters where additional cylinders were stored, he grabbed the guideline with his left hand and Wang Dao grabbed the line with his right hand. They began to rise rapidly, which caused both divers to become confused. Wang Yang was struggling to remain conscious as the effects of decompression sickness became overwhelming. At 90 meters, Wang Yang took his hand off the guide rope and gripped the rock next to him. With his other hand, he used his flashlight to look at his depth. The remaining air pressure in the cylinder both divers were using was about 40 psi. But since they were only 15 meters away from their stored canister, this wasn't really a worry. Wang Yang started to feel more relieved, feeling like they were almost out of this nightmare. When he turned sideways and saw his longtime friend Wang Dao floating upward, instinctively Wang Yang reached out to grab him, but it was too late. He was out of reach. Within a second, Wang Dao was out of sight. and panicked and knowing he had to act quickly, Wang Yang rapidly ascended 10 meters, but could not spot Wang Dao anywhere. His visibility was extremely low, so his options were limited. Not wanting to let go of the guide rope, Wang Yang frantically searched the area around him, extending his arm in all directions. At this point, the effects of rising too rapidly were playing tricks on Wang Yang's mind. As he felt like he was dreaming, he took a deep breath closed his eyes and shook his head violently, almost like he was trying to remove the cloud that obscured his mind. He checked his air pressure again and saw that only 20 psi remained. Wang Yang made his way over to the location where their extra cylinders were stored and quickly transferred over to a new tank. Once he felt more secure, he realized the seriousness of the matter. The feeling of isolation was overwhelming and Wang Yang desperately wanted to find his friend. He immediately covered his own light to see if Wang Dao's light was shining, but he only saw darkness. The cave was silent and the familiar rocks around him no longer felt the same. He would search around for a few minutes with only one thought in his mind, find Wang Dao. His current cylinder of gas would not allow Wang Yang to return to greater depths. He grabbed the extra cylinder stationed at this location. The tank was a trimix of oxygen, helium, and nitrogen that allows divers to reach deeper locations. Instead of returning to the surface, Wang Yang started descending again, first to 80 meters, then to 90. His vision was becoming blurry, and it was harder to remain conscious. Being an expert diver, he knew that he was experiencing oxygen poisoning, but he just didn't care. Yang thought that if he convulsed and died, at least he would be joining his friend. His heart was pounding in his chest, and every thump rang in his ears. Then all of a sudden, he fainted. It was only for a second, but it was enough for his instincts to take over. 
and he quickly rose to the 50 meter mark. In the process, multiple decompression stops were skipped, as it was impossible for him to remain calm. Wang Yang thought to himself if he could at least reach their support diver, then maybe, just maybe, he could help. He continued rising until he reached 21 meters, where Xiao Pei met him. Zhao Pei was extremely surprised that Wang Yang was alone and screamed at him underwater. Once Wang Yang confirmed that he had been separated from his diving partner, Zhao Pei dove down following the rope trying to find any traces of Wang Dao. No longer feeling alone, Wang Yang felt less nervous, but after a minute, at 21 meters, the effects of decompression sickness became extreme. He felt like his entire body was in a tornado, constantly spinning. His legs and joints were in extreme pain, as the rapid rise caused nitrogen gas and helium bubbles to expand in his body. Zhao Pei returned and realized that Wang Yang desperately needed help to decompress. They returned to 36 meters, and the pain became less and less. Zhao Pei, still wanting to look for Wang Dao, began searching around them, but Wang Yang signaled for him to stop and help. He felt on the verge of death and realized without assistance, he could not make it back to the surface. The pair slowly rose, moving only a few meters at a time before stopping to decompress. Wang Yang was falling in and out of consciousness and could no longer control his own body. At six meters, he was completely out of it. Zhao Pei would switch him over to pure oxygen, and after more than an hour, would wake up Wang Yang. They returned to the surface, and immediately, Wang Yang could describe what happened and for Zhao to make a distress call. The duo would return to the water, where Wang Yang remained for another 30 minutes until the pain in his arms had finally subsided. The total decompression time took 150 minutes, which was 40 minutes faster than their original plan. Zhao would drag Wang Yang out of the water and carry him to the side of a nearby road where an ambulance would take him to a hospital. The local government was notified and a French diving team would be asked to search for Wang Dao. However, due to the preparation needed, they would not make the dive until the following morning. Wang Yang would experience dizziness and vomiting for an entire day as well as muscle soreness and swollen blood vessels. But after two hyperbaric oxygen chambers, his condition would finally stabilize. Wang Dao's body was found the next morning at the 51 meter mark, but due to the cave structure, it is believed that the current carried him to this location. He was found with his mask on his face, no regulator in his mouth, and without any signs of a struggle. A technical analysis of the accident revealed multiple factors contributing to Wang Dao's tragic fate. Stress-induced rapid breathing, carbon dioxide buildup, and increased nitrogen narcosis, gas planning, overconfidence, lack of a sufficient support team, failure to rehearse the stage bottle sequence, and not following a gradual approach were all identified as crucial errors. Wang Yang and Wang Dao's unfortunate experience serves as a stark reminder of the challenges and risks associated with deep cave diving, the need for thorough preparation, conservative gas planning, and mental readiness cannot be understated. Wang Dao's memory lives on in the hearts of his diving friends in the diving community.